All right, I'm going to take a look at NHL highlights here. This is from an Anaheim Ducks Edmonton Oilers game from earlier in the season. And we're just going to walk through some of the stuff I like, some of the things I see the NHL goalies doing that we may want to learn from as mistakes. And at the end of the day, I'm not assuming I'm better than any of these NHL guys. So criticizing NHL goalies is not about me thinking I'm better. It's about trying to help you become a better goalie and learn from the mistakes that even NHL goalies make. So let's dig into it. So quick turnover at the blue line. Puck still gets out. Again, most offense in the NHL is generated at turnovers by the blue line. So you've got a zone setup, a little attack. And here's a tragic mistake that Mike Smith tends to make. And why I believe likely that they need to upgrade their goaltending with that team out in front of them if they want to go on a, a legitimate cup run. But let's watch this. I'm going to pause this here as the play develops. What we notice right here is we see Mike Smith took a quick look and as the zone is being entered by the Ducks, watch Mike Smith as he takes a quick peek over his shoulder. And he's looking to see what he's got. Now he's got lots of support, a lot of orange jerseys back there. And basically it's one guy in an island attacking the net. So he's looking for a late guy. And he's seeing who's got some offensive threat later on in the play. So as this thing continues on, you're going to watch. He gets very close to the post. He's not a big challenge guy and he doesn't really need to be because he's so big but there's times when he chooses to be deep when he doesn't need to be and if you look at this here you got two oilers supporting on the guy at the puck which is going to leave the late guy coming in as an option smith resquares, and as the puck ends up going to the guy he goes back to the post and when you're there even at six foot four or whatever he is there's lots of room over you and the guy's got that now if he just chose over here to simply go across the crease to the top of the blue that would have been a much better outcome so let's watch that one more time and see what we think so puck comes bad defensive zone coverage he retreats back to the post leaving that short side even at the at the nhl level at that size you got a right-handed shot they're going to try to get that all day long so that's something that you got to be very careful about when you're choosing your depth you want to make sure you get to the top of the crease now here's a great overhead angle and right there you can see he's falling in love with his post there's no reason for him to go back to that post he's given the guy an opportunity and ultimately we know what happens on that so don't be so deep in the net get out to the top of that crease and he's there shrugging. If he's here, that's going to be a save. There's another little point I want to illustrate. I think this is Stolar's playing. Right here, we've got great defensive support. Guys have a nice little box set up there. And we've got no threat. There's no way this guy over in the corner is going to shoot it at the net. So there's no benefit to being in the RVH here. You should be up on your feet on this play. There's nothing coming from that. Only be in the RVH when the threat's imminent. And as you see what happens, he goes post to post. Let's watch that one more time. Staying down in the RVH. And so he's he's basically attacking his mobility this whole time. So he's no mobility right here on the glove side post. No threat. Pass goes to him. He stays in the RVH when the guy's gapped out on him. And now the D doesn't see the backdoor threat. Stolars doesn't see the backdoor threat. And when that pass goes to him... He's caught very immobile, launched on that post. If he does this whole sequence from his feet and just does a complete push across up on his feet over to here and rotates out to the guy, toes top of the crease, that passing lane is extinguished. That puck goes right through the blue crease by playing RVH to RVH instead of up on his feet. He makes his job so much tougher. I think you'll see on a couple of these different angles that we have here, you're going to catch a better version of it. So watch here. What do we got? A zone setup. We got great guys back. Nobody in the high slot. There's no threat out in front. So there's no reason for a tight centering pass RVH type of thing where you're afraid of it. He's on his backhand. 0% chance to score from over there. And as the play continues, watch. Stolarz goes from post to post while down in a non-threatening position. This guy steps out. And if he wanted to, likely could have went bar down just by his right ear. But the guy on the back door gets this nice pass and cashes it in. And if you watch, that pass comes right through the blue paint for an easy tap-in. 
and Stolarz is wandering around on his butt. So again, that's a prime example of when you shouldn't be in the RVH and you should just be playing post to post up on your edges. That's an example of RVH fail. And from this angle here, you're going to clearly see where this pass goes. You see Stolarz is in the RVH right now. And when you're in the RVH, you can't really get off that post and cut this pass. But watch how close it comes to him. Like, there's no way that puck should get to that man. Goalie, you've got to cut that pass. And if you're not glued to the goal line in love with the post, that's an easy save to make. Uh, so for me, rotate out, step out to the top of the crease. And if they backdoor you there, that's number 42's fault, not your fault. Here's a, a decent save from the RVH. I don't really like the fact that he's in the RVH from here, but he tries to cut the pass. He, even though he misses, he still stays mobile and still tries to get over on it and makes a nice save. For me, I still think if he's up on his feet here hugging the post, he's going to have a far better chance of making that save consistently. Here he makes the save because he was a little mobile off the post. But that's not my preference. I think in that scenario, I'd be up on my feet, push across, and throw a close butterfly at the top of the crease. It would be a, mo a lot more consistently deployable save. So there's this Connor McDavid guy, I think. Uh, he's a decent hockey player. So what do we got going here? We've got um, defensive support on the center lane. So McDavid's likely not going to be able to drive to the front of the net, but he's got superhuman speed. So right now we know he's pinched off. He's got no other passing options. Anyways, you're going to be nervous when you see Connor McDavid. But as we sort of scrub through this, watch what happens. He's clearly in a shooting position. Not bad positioning from Stolarz. I just have to have a harder knee drive than McDavid's release, which most goalies haven't figured out since McDavid's got an amazing release. So watch that again. Center lane, he's got no passing options. Maybe you grab a little bit extra depth there, but still, it wouldn't have changed things. If you have a soft knee drive challenging or a soft knee drive deep in the crease, the end result's still going to be a tweener. And as Mitch Korn says, nothing through you, nothing underneath you. All right. See another view of this. McDavid catches the puck at the blue line in full flight. Look at all the ducks standing pretty straight-legged and watching him sift through there, just like that highlight goal he scored the other night where he went through everybody. A lot of spectators when he's on the ice. Sticks to the side of his body, presenting an open stick, showing his shooting position. And this is why it's tough to stop NHL guys when they tween you because he doesn't have a lot of wind-up, a lot of warning, shoots it quickly. And his release overpowers Stolar's knee drive. Of course, when you're watching McDavid, you're playing against a star player on the other team, it's going to be important for you to identify personnel. So during stoppages, face-offs, make sure you're identifying personnel if they're guys that you know. There's a nice pad save from Smith and then people sitting around being spectators. Let's watch that one one more time here. So let's look at the situation. Here's what we got. So we got a zone entry. We're in pretty good shape here. Defensively back. We've got to have a much better back check on this guy. And of course, we've got guys all fixated on the puck carrier, not looking at this guy. Smith makes a great pad save. He's not detached to the post. Rebound goes out of danger, but NHL redirect. And that's where we need a closed butterfly not an open butterfly, and that just finds its way through the armpits. So these last uh, couple goals are through the goalie, even at the NHL level. If we can be good at denying access and closing up our coverages on these tight little plays in close and make the guy score outside your body, you're going to be far more successful. And from this angle here, you see the same sequence. He pushes over, and you know, I see something happens here. Because he makes this first save, he's good. He does a pivot, plant, and push. But because he goes back to the post trying to get to the RVH he loves so well, he hits the post and a rotation happens. And he over-rotates. See that? He over-rotates. Now he's squared up to the corner, not even in front of the net. And then on the redirect in tight, his response is to open and fill space. 
and that puck gets tipped through him. You know, it's a cause and effect thing. If he doesn't go back to that post in the slide, he's not going to have that issue. As an example, here's what I would have loved to see. You make the pad save, backside recovery, up to your feet, instead of sliding to the post, because now you're mobile and locked, caused an over-rotation, and then you're swimming on the tip that ends up going through you. A lack of control, lack of precision. There you see the over-rotation, and then he's out of the play, and a nice little tip right through you. And we've just got to be better as goalies at denying access. Easier said than done many times, but that's a key thing that's going to make you have a better result in the nets. Stolars, look at him. We've got a PP setup, looks to me like a five on three, very dangerous. And if you look over here and watch Stolars, I'm going to back this up just a hair. He's using a relaxed concentration stance. See how he's looking up over the shorter man in front? He doesn't need to be in a shot ready, razor ready stance here because a shot's not imminent. The guys aren't going to waste a power play by drifting one from way back here with a stationary puck carrier. So he knows nothing's imminent. And then as things get more dangerous, then he'll get down in a deeper crouch. And he's not hacking and whacking the guy in front of that. He's just got a glove on him so that he can sort of push the guy, if needed, lightly so he's not in his crease, not in his face. And I mean, you're talking Connor McDavid and Dreisaitl. They're going to score here. But let's see exactly the sequencing of what happens here. So puck goes down low. Stolars goes to the RBH, which I think is appropriate here because it's tight. And he makes a little save off it. Rebound bounces out. Stolars gets out. Again, more traffic. And this is going to be a goal that I have no complaint on. If you seriously look at this, you've got Connor McDavid and Dreisaitl. Significant traffic. You're five on three. And that puck is already on its way into the net before Stolars has a chance to see it and react. And that's a hell of a goal. And why we do that screenboard skate around drill that you're going to see in a later video. There's another good view from behind in this power play zone setup here. So let's get this. Here's a good view from overhead from behind. Stolars up tall, relaxed concentration stance, looking over Hyman's right shoulder. And we'll watch as the play progresses here. He's not getting threat ready yet. Now he gets a little deeper crouch. RBH, not a bad place for it. Puck bounces out off of him. And then look at the traffic. Look at this. We've got three guys in front of the net of your own teammates. And then we've got another Edmonton Oiler there. And when it bumps out to the side, nobody's stopping that. And that's another message for your goalies. you got to understand, there's lots of stuff that's going to happen where no matter what you do, you have no chance. I don't think God himself could have stopped that. Okay, defensive zone face-off. One thing I love to see, goalies in razor-ready stances, especially if the center's on his forehand, because once in a while, he can pump it right at the net. So we had a clean face-off win. And let's go through that again here. So, puck is dropped, clean win, goalie's razor ready, guy walks the blue line and gets it in on net, and then chaos ensues. And you can see Stolar's doing a nice job battling in here, sticks get tied up and guys are right on him. But that's a good example of a goalie battling through the chaos. Nice job, Stolar's. Again, here's a good example of Smith's tendency. Instead of going across the crease to the top, which is going to be a shorter pathway, he goes back to the RVH on a guy that's gapped on him, and he gets lit up even at his size. So here we are in neutral zone. Look, we've got three-on-two rush with two Oilers set up to do the back pressure. I don't like the D giving up the line that easy. You almost, as a defenseman, want to make that blue line a third defenseman. So I appreciate it when D don't give up the blue line so easy because now you let this happen. And as it comes through here, Smith is still basically square to Getzlaff on the original pass, and he's looking at the pass. You've got to beat the pass. He should already be on his horse over there. But Smith, not really good on the lateral motion, so he reverts deeply in the crease back to the post, and a guy shoots from just inside the dot. He's down in the RVH on a 30-foot shot. And, of course, at the NHL level, guess what happens? That's what happens. 
So I think if I was coaching Smith, I'd say, listen, you have decent athleticism. You're a big guy. You don't need to be hyper aggressive, challenging all over the place. But I think what would help you is instead of going back to the post in all these occasions, even if you give yourself a foot more of depth, you're going to have a chance. But basically right there, you're a shooter tutor. It's either going to hit the shooter tutor or it's going to go in. There's no ability to close off plays when you're that deep in the net. That's not weak defensive zone coverage either. That's a goalie that needs to find a way to get to the top of the crease. I think uh, a lot of guys in A-League would be able to score that puck shooting from there, especially when he's in a non-reactive position. He's just block. And either he's going to hit him or go in. I think another problem that you see happening on that, if you watch, is because he slid back to the post, watch the problem he caused himself. The stick gets caught in the net, and now he's got a stick problem, and he's just discombobulated, which is a technical term for discombobulated. This is a good thing to look at here. So we got a point shot, and look what he does. He does a nice job of getting this puck off the blocker and elevating. Who's going to score that puck? Even McDavid's got to catch it. And that buys time for you to reset on the post and then play it as accordingly in the diesel. So something as simple as elevating a rebound buys yourself time. Instead of putting it on McDavid's stick, you had a little bit of time to move around with him and play the chaos. Here we've got a two-on-one with significant back pressure. And look at Smith's actually out at the top of the crease instead of welded to the post. Maybe their goalie coach talked to him in the intermission. Nice play, but you also can have a little bit of flow. I don't like the defensive zone coverage on that. You got the second guy there. And one thing I do see here, he's down early. And he doesn't have the puck in a shooting position. He's got the puck in a deking position. See how the puck's out in front of the puck carrier? He doesn't off, have it off to the side, so deke is likely. And without any fakes from the attacker, Smith defaults to the butterfly, tries a little mini poke, but didn't have any flow and was deked around. So, I mean, that's not the type of goaltending that's going to win you Stanley Cups. That's a save, you know, you're going to make probably 70% of the time if you're right on your game. And that's why I've mentioned a couple of times, I think... Edmonton has got to get different goaltending in here with the type of team they have out in front. You give up a goal like this, not good defensive zone coverage and not good on the goaltender. I think you'll see clearly here. When a guy's got the puck closed off on his stick like that, he's deking. He can't shoot that puck until he adjusts it and squares up the blade to face the goalie, either on the forehand or backhand. So you got to know right here that that's going to be a deke. And... He sees the gap here between Nurse and Smith. He says, you know what? Nobody's going to knock me out in today's NHL. Weak side defense is not going to come over and give me a Paul Korea concussion. So I'll just pull it through here and bang. At least I'll give Smith credit for trying a little bit of a mini poke. What do we got here? Three on three. Why are you guys backing up and giving up the blue line when you got three on three? Nobody's going to deke through three guys unless you're McDavid. <laughs> 